Hello everyone, thank you so much for again for tuning back into my channel. If you don't know me, hi, how are you? My name is Rosa. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. We'll get started with the video. So today I actually wanted to go over what you need to be successful in your clinical laboratory clinical rotations. All right, guys. So I actually did my clinical rotations from the fall of 2018 to the spring of 2019. So it was a cool time. I might try to throw in some pictures here and there. I don't think I took too many pictures while I was there because it's kind of hard. There was lots of people. You don't really want to be seen on your phone. One of the rules right there that I'll go over with you. And so it was a wonderful experience. I actually did my clinicals at a level one trauma hospital and it, I got to see a lot. I got to be a part of different areas of the laboratory. I was in the core lab, which consisted of hematology, urinalysis and body fluids, chemistry. And I think that's it for that one. I did special chemistry. I did some allergy testing. I got to see some flow cytometry, microbiology, um, HLA, which was super cool. And so I got to see a lot more things than maybe someone else who was in a patient care area. Like you don't really see as much. So I actually got to see a lot of different types of testing. And even though I'm a student and I didn't get to like really go fully, fully into all of the work, I still got to see a really good amount. And that was awesome for me. And so I'm going to share with you some tips that you guys will need to be successful in your clinical rotations. My number one thing. Okay. You guys got to be on time. You're not going to clock in, I would think, unless you're like a paid employee. I know I didn't have to clock in. You've given a name badge and everything because, you know, you still want people to know who you are, of course. But make sure you're on time. Even though you're not clocking in, it is really important because you might have stuff that you need to get started on in the morning with whoever is training with you. You're going to be in different areas each week or each day, just depending on how your schedule is. You want to make a good impression because this might be a place of future employment and it counts towards your grade. So you don't want to be late. Like that's probably rule number one. Please don't. Speaking of being on time, you also don't want to leave early unless they allow you to and tell you that there's nothing else going on in the day and you can go home and study. You don't want to leave early either because then it makes you seem disinterested and you don't want to seem disinterested. You want to make it seem like you want to be there and you should want to be there like this is going to be your future career you should be enjoying it and if you're not or if like people are giving you a hard time such as like people you're training with let like your supervisor know because you're gonna have like a lab liaison who's kind of like in charge of the clinical students and then you're gonna have your liaison at school so let either one of them know if you're having any issues because you want it to be an enjoyable experience and that's the whole purpose of it is for you to kind of get your hands in the field and see how it is so you can decide if you want to work there or work somewhere else and just to gain interest in the laboratory. Please ask questions. Nothing makes you seem more engaged than asking questions, being attentive and alert while you're at your clinicals because you know, you're going to be shown a lot of things. And even if you aren't going to stay at that place for your future employment, if you are, it is really good to take notes because a lot of the things you're seeing, you might be using depending on which area of the lab you're working in. And it's still good to ask questions because some of the things that you see in clinicals could be stuff that you actually also need in your lectures or for exams. It may not fully pertain because I feel like for me, the only one that really, really helped me out with my exams was my hematology rotation because I wasn't very familiar with the cells beforehand and all of that was able to help me out a lot more when I was back at school. So it's just a matter of what you really need to learn and take from clinicals in order to bring it back to what you need to do on your exams at school. You want to ask for help if you ever need help with anything. Nothing is worse than having a student mess something up because they didn't ask a question rather than asking that question in the first place and avoiding a huge mistake. As a student, you know, things are going to happen. Like you might not know everything. You might mess something up, but it's honestly better to just ask and avoid like a huge problem or issue than to mess something up, have people at work be annoyed with you because you mess something up for them, which is going to make them not result things out properly or they have to go on and fix a machine 
which could have completely been avoided. So just try to ask for help if you really need it. Don't think you can solve everything on your own because you've not been working there for years. You've literally been there probably for like a month, maybe two, or maybe it's your first day and you just don't wanna mess anything up. Help out in any way that you can. You don't want to be a burden to the people who are training you because they're doing it because they have to. If they didn't have to, they probably, most of them wouldn't really want to, as bad as that sounds. But you know, they have a job they have to do. A lot of people are really busy. That's their job, that's how they make their money. And you know, they're there to help you out. And so if there's something you can do, even small little things to make their life easier, do it for them. One of the things that I did when I was in my clinical rotations was in chemistry, I actually helped them out quite a lot. It was very busy. So what I did was for blood gases, they would come down in a tube system. And whenever one would come, I would run it over to the ABL machine for the person in chemistry to run. Or even like once they saw I got comfortable, they're like, hey, Rosa, can you put this blood gas on? And I was like, yeah, sure. And they would just result it out. So I was trying to be as helpful as I could to make their life a little bit easier. And they're gonna love you for that. You wanna be nice and friendly. Nothing is worse than a student who thinks they know it all or someone who's rude, or you can just tell they don't wanna be there. Because you might have those people that you're training with that aren't very friendly or don't wanna really get to know you, which is fine, of course. But I didn't really have that experience. Everyone was actually really nice with me. People would talk to me. I would talk to them too. And I just try to be as nice as I could and you know get to know people a little bit because like I said, they might be your future coworkers someday. And you also wanna make a good impression too, because any area of the lab that you're in, that's gonna be used for your grade for class. And if they say like, oh, you know, you're disengaged, you're rude, you're inattentive, like that's gonna bring your grade all the way down and you don't want that. If there's things that you're gonna do the next day, make sure you take some notes and study them at home so you're ready for the next day. You're gonna be learning a lot and if you know you're gonna be in a certain area for a week, you want to show that you're making progress, that you're learning things. Take notes if you need to, it's really important. If you feel like you need to take them, do it. I had my little notebook. Make sure you carry a little notebook and pen with you at all times because you might have something that you do need to jot down or there might be something that you learn while you're at clinicals that can help you out when you're back in the classroom. Some other little things I wanna share with you guys. Have some time management skills. Clinicals is hard. People are gonna tell you, oh, it's not bad. No, it's kind of rough. It's basically you're working for free for like a full eight hours and you're not getting paid and you still have to study and do stuff for school. It is really tiring, you guys. Especially for me, it was because I was also working at my clinical site after I even did clinicals. I usually would stay for like two, maybe three hours sometimes after clinicals. Let's say I went in at eight and I got out at three. And then right after that, I was actually working in the core lab, um, receiving some specimens and that made me tired. I would leave home at six. I wouldn't get home until seven. And then I have like three hours until I go to sleep and do it all over again. So make sure you get rest, eat healthy. Make sure you take some caffeine if you drink caffeine. I drink matcha. Let me grab my cup. I got this cute cup to motivate me. Even though I'm not in clinicals anymore, but your girl is in the working field now. So I love me some matcha tea. So I got this cute mug so I can have my matcha in here. Just do little things that like kind of help motivate you more than anything. You're gonna need that motivation. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be rough. If you still got lectures like I did, I still had class on Mondays, Fridays I had off, but I actually worked in a research lab at school for about three hours too. It makes some extra money, you know, cause we all need some money. And it was a lot, it was a lot of work. You're gonna need some sleep. You're gonna need to time manage really well. Make sure that you have a planner if you need it. Make sure you plan out your days accordingly because you're still gonna need to study. You're still gonna have your outside life, hopefully a social life. You're gonna wanna do things that don't involve school or you're gonna have to work, most likely. If you don't, you're lucky. And you know, you just wanna make sure you have the best time possible because it is a short period of time. It's going to go by so quick and you're gonna learn a lot. So yeah, there's this video, you guys. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below or anything I didn't answer that you might want me to go over. I would love to answer that for you. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated when I post. I post every week and I don't think I'm gonna do the Tuesdays anymore. I'll just do sometime in the week. So make sure you're subscribed and stay updated on when I post. And thank you guys again so much for watching my video.